Well, it's a beautiful Sunday morning, and as you can tell, I'm doing voiceover again. Well, at least there'll be a few times today that the microphone will actually work inside my helmet. So you won't have to endure as much of this as the previous video. I've got about 450 miles to get home. It's been a great couple days at the Polar Bear Adventure Rally here in Keystone Heights, hosted at Goldhead Branch State Park. Thank you, Goldhead Branch. So this is me leaving and heading back using uh, a portion of the Trans Florida route that stays south of Interstate 10. Then I'll depart from it as I get closer to the Suwannee River instead of looping up north of I-10 to get across the Suwannee River, I'll cross at Dowling Park. And you'll see a little bit more of that. I had to adjust my route a little bit because of some private property that I was hoping to be able to ride through, but there was no indication as to whether it was truly private property or not from some of the research I had done before the trip. So anyway, some beautiful roads, a gorgeous day, pretty good conditions. Here I am skirting right along the east side of Interstate 75. You can see over to my left some of the traffic on the interstate. You'll hear me mention in a bit the weather forecast for the coming evening as a cold front is making its way towards me from the west. So I knew I really would like to get as far through the Apalachicola National Forest as possible. I had seen how some of those roads could flood up in the Osceola Forest and I had seen some potential of that last week when I was coming through the Apalachicola Forest that I would really like to avoid so I will push quite hard today to get over to the west side of the forest south of Bloodstown and Bristol, Florida. found these long farm buildings of some sort on my left very interesting they were all completely empty you can actually see all the way through from the door on my side to the door on the far side well it's very apropos to say way down upon the Swan River as it's a nice little drop off Coming into the section that has probably the biggest question mark for me concerning this uh, route that I created to get back over to the seat where I branched off from the Trans Florida route. So we'll see. I don't know if I'm going to run into poor road conditions or more roadblocks than I was able to see when I was scouting it out, but either way, we're about to find out very soon now. So I just made my first turn off of the paved road, and so far so good. Boy, if it's all like this, it would just be superb. 
to see. Yep, so the bike's back out again for just a bit. This was some great riding in this area. Unfortunately, as you'll see, it won't last for very long. I learned that this is a private hunting lease area. A couple nice gentlemen I was able to ask and they gave me not only that information but uh, were very polite and appreciated them very much. Uh, they gave me some tips on probably the best way to get out of here. Ooh, cool. So instead of turning around and going back the same way I came in, I'm at least getting to see a little bit more of this. But uh, he said to look out for fast oncoming trucks. They're working with, uh, with hounds. This isn't as pretty of a road, that's for sure. As what I was on when I first came in. So anyway, I'll keep working to get out of their hunting lease land. Man, it's too bad you can't ride through this section because this is nice. But I understand the whole thing about hunting leases and private property and so forth. Back to Boring Pavement, head north and pick up uh, the Florida Trans, the Trans Florida route from the CADS gentleman. So my uh, alternate route coming up to the Trans Florida route brings me right up here against the uh, south side of Interstate 10 before I'll start to move back towards the south again. So I probably could have just used the, their entire route rather than mine, but it was fun to do. May look at the two and come up with a combination if I ever do it again. Here's one of the dirt portions of the Trans Florida route. Again, the portion that's south of I-10. Similar to what I experienced up on the north part of I, up north of I-10 last week when I was traveling to the event. Plenty of oaks with the Spanish moss. Lots of canopy roads. 
because it's all just the uh, single lane road, the two track road. So it makes for some pretty scenery. I've abandoned the uh, Trans Florida route as it heads further north back towards I-10 and up toward Monticello. Fortunately, I had some tracks uh, from a guy that's working on a Panhandle Adventure Trail, or as some are referring to it as the Fat. So this is just a little section that will connect me back over to the seat. Much of his track are the same as the seat, but this section is not. It's mostly an overlander route, but I think he rides adventure biking as well. I'm thinking of something like Valman or Veilman. I'll I'll look it up when I get home and be sure to uh, include that. I'm back on the seat now, so that short section of the fat brought me to the seat. I am working my way now back down towards the south to get to uh, that St. Mark's area, and then Crawfordville, and back into the Apalachicola National Forest. And I'm going to try to go all the way on over to Camel Lake Campground on the far side of the forest. There is a chance for some rain during the night. That way if it were to flood some of those low areas through the forest, I don't have to deal with them tomorrow morning. So I've got about 100 miles to go and about uh, three hours over three hours of daylight so it shouldn't be a problem avoiding any unforeseen mishaps <laughs> or delays
So before it gets dark, I'll give you a little look at the campsite. You saw me drive around, so you saw a quick look at them all. I ended up in site number five. All the sites are huge. Um, so this site does not have power or water. Still costs 20 bucks. Ten ten dollars extra if you want power or water. Anyway, you can see my three-man tent. It's really more like a two-man tent, but I got that size. So hopefully one day, if Brandon and or Evan want to sleep in it, there's a little bit more room. It still folds up quite compact in either of the motorcycles. My kitchen here on the end of the table, great for boiling water, making those freeze-dried meals, yum yum, and oatmeal in the morning. Of course the bike parking lot, my charging station. So because I pushed it a little hard today to get all the way here, I rode 276.4 miles. Total for the trip so far is 1031.2. That's a lot of miles on a dual sport in five days. One, two, three, four, five, six now. Tomorrow will be day seven to get me home. Camel Lake is located south of Bluntstown, so it got me through the Apalachee Cola Forest, like I said earlier, because of the threat of rain tonight. Great view of the lake. Looks like it's going to be a beautiful sunset. Now to decide whether I want to try to get any firewood or just skip the fire tonight. It's such a deep fire pit. It wouldn't be much fun to sit beside because anyway, it's just hidden. So I'll probably skip the fire tonight. We've had plenty of fires at the Polar Bear Adventure Rally. Even the last two mornings had fires at our campsite. So anyway, Home sweet home for a night. Not sure what the beard looks like. It usually looks pretty crazy after riding all day with the helmet on. <laughs> I almost forgot I should include a photo or a little video of my Lazy Boy recliner when I'm not camping. These things are amazingly light, compact, and amazingly comfortable.